everybody and welcome and welcome back to the brighter side in today's video we're going to be getting into how my first semester of college at the university of central florida went and some tips that i learned from my first semester now this video is not going to be too long because i only have one semester worth of tips so without further ado let's get right into this so a little rundown about me if you don't know i'm jana denari smith i'm 19 years old and i attend the university of central florida I am a junior kind of senior-ish kind of situation going on here right now. And I am a psychology major. I chose this yet because I wanted to run here, run track here for the longest. I also love the campus. It's extremely beautiful. I did a UCF soccer camp here. I did a UCF track junior day here. I've traveled to a lot of places in the States and no other state has my heart like Florida does. I don't know. I just, I'm a Florida girl at heart. I have to be close to the beach. I love the water and I love the beach. I need the sun, I thrive after the sun. I need the sun all the time though, y'all, because I will get dark and gloomy and nobody loves a dark and gloomy J day. COVID also took a lot of opportunities for me to go visit the schools out of state that I wanted to visit and also like down south. So I chose to do psychology because I've done school really, really hard for a long time. I kind of wanted to do something fun and not overwork myself in the two years that I had here. And then I come to Orlando all the time. The networking opportunities in Orlando are far and wide. There's a lot of people to meet. And then UCF is, I think, the second or the third largest campus in the nation. So UCF really just had everything that I really wanted packed into one school. But I do want to tell y'all, I got waitlisted when I first applied. I applied before I graduated high school. I got accepted to majority of the other schools that I applied for, but I really wanted UCF and I got waitlisted. UCF was like, hold up, wait a minute. I was bummed out about that, but I still kept it pushing and I was gonna go to USF. Then I decided to just stay home, continue my studies at home. I also received a four year scholarship in fifth grade to attend that community college and I was saving a lot of money so it just made sense. I applied before I graduated from my community college and with the prospective credits that I was going to have when I graduated, they accepted me. So that's my little journey of how I got to UCF. Now preparing for UCF was not easy. Like I said, I was waitlisted before. So I knew that I needed a little extra to myself to get accepted to the school. I was even more excited because I almost failed one of the classes that I needed to graduate from my community college to get to UCF. And if I didn't pass that class, I would have been three credits short and UCF might have still accepted me. But when I read in contingency upon receiving your associate's degree or receiving 60 credits, that had my heart beating. I was like, I gotta pass this class, I gotta pass this class, I gotta pass this class. I passed statistics with a C, it was broke. Oh my God, I was so excited to be able to just tell the world and tell myself and know in my heart that I made the right decision to be here and then executed my plan. And then the next step of my future already is going in my favor. Words couldn't explain how happy I was when I passed that class and got my associate's degree and was able to just get ready for moving up to school. Dorm shopping, dorm room shopping, I did most of my school shopping on Amazon and at Big Lots. Big Lots, I don't know if everybody has a Big Lots, but I have Big Lots. And Big Lots be doing a big one when it comes to decorations for the cheap, school supplies for the cheap, and cleaning supplies for the cheap. Then I did something drastic, y'all. I cut my hair to a low cut. Wanted to get waves. I cut my hair for senior graduation. I got finger waves. I dyed it red. I got my first perm. got my first color. It was fun. And it was cute. And then it grew out. And I was like, okay, I got some braids. I was like, when I take these out, I'm going to just start all over. Because I was not with my hair being short back here and then long over here. I was not with that. So I just cut it all off and I started fresh. And I got me a low cut and was going to start getting waves. But then... I started planning a trip for Mexico in June and I cut my hair in January and in between those two times I was like I want braids for Mexico I do not want to be looking like a little bald freaking beluga whale when I get out the water I was not it for me so I started growing my hair back out I bought my car if you haven't watched my how to save 9k to buy your first used car video go ahead and check that out but I was saving for my car the duration of that semester I bought my car at the end of the semester for my Christmas gift to myself and went into 2022 with Appa 
on four wheels, hot and ready to go. Yeah. And then I got to Orlando. And then this is when life started really showing its true colors. Nothing bad happened or nothing. I moved up to school. I'm not in the dorm room. I'm at an off-campus apartment. Other than Northview, Chester students don't really have any housing on campus. I started classes, then boom, I started missing my family. When I'm in a new place, my social anxiety goes through the roof. I started psyching myself out of going to functions. I started psyching myself out of going to events and meeting new people. Every time I would say yes to going somewhere, I would eventually just say, no, I'm not going because I would just be so scared of being in front of these people. I got up here. I was 18. I know a lot of people that I started meeting were older than me because I'm a junior in college at the time, but I'm 18 years old. So I'm meeting a lot of older people and it's cool to be in front of older people, but sometimes you want to be around people who understand where you are in life. I went to a small depressive state. I will stay out, became a hermit, a little turtle. In my shell, I wanted to just be at home all the time. Not even that I wanted to be at home all the time. I did want to go out. I just was so nervous to do so. It took me three months to get out and go do my first activity. And that was because of my longtime friend, Kaya. We went to church together when we were younger. I've known Kaya since I've been in middle school. But we were never close from, like, the beginning of high school to the end of high school. I didn't even want to talk to people that I knew up here. I just was being very antisocial with everybody. She was always trying to get me to go places and I would just be like, nah, I'm cool. I don't want to do that for real. I say I think about it, but I just never really stuck to it. The first time I stuck to it, I went out with her. And ever since it's been history, me and Kai have been hanging with each other. Since that day, I went to that event with her. So I'm real thankful for that because ever since then, I've been in a better place and I've been happier and I've been meeting people y'all. It's been really fun just being up here and learning my environment and getting to see who I am without my parents and my siblings around. It's just been a little roller coaster ride. But yes, y'all, I was in a real bad depressive state. When you cut your hair, be ready for that. I wouldn't say it was just me cutting my hair, but I know a lot of it was I couldn't do nothing with my hair like I was used to changing it up and switching it and you know, being a different girl each and every day. I wasn't used to that. And then your facial got to be gator. And when it's not, you can tell that it's not. Or you feel like people see all your insecurities because your hair is gone. As a black girl, our hair is our crown. Our hair is our everything for most of us. So not having it at some points in time, it was just very hard. I don't know how else to say it. It was just very hard not to have my hair. It was hard not having anything to hide behind, especially when your social anxiety is already high and everybody's already looking at you because you have short hair. They don't see a lot of females with short hair. So they looking at you, your social anxiety high, and then you knew and you don't know what's going on. It was just a lot to deal with. It really taught me that yeah you that girl regardless of what you got and what you don't got but yes like i said i didn't have much to say because it's my first semester but i do have a few tips for you guys if you are coming in don't be afraid to get acclimated to your surroundings before you start getting involved and trying to find friends before your semester starts make sure you have a schedule for the semester you know when all your classes are in session you know when all your classes are not in session you know what's online and what's not online. You know from your syllabus, y'all. Always check your syllabus. You should always know when your next assignment is and what days your assignments are due for each class. And that needs to be written out so that you can see it. So that you're not just going off memory. Because if you try to just go off memory, you're going to forget something. And when you forget something, it's bad. It's college. When you forget something, it's bad. I don't care if it's a 10-point assignment. When you miss something, it's bad. We're not in high school anymore where you could just be like, hey, can I make this up before you know this mess is over? Nah. You miss it, sometimes you just miss it. And it's on you. And that's another thing. Everything is on you when you get up here. There's no mommy and daddy to hold your hand, brother, sister to hold your hand, cousin, uncles, aunties to hold your hand. When you get up to college, your work is on you. Making sure all your assignments is done and submitted on time is on you. Making sure financial aid is covered. You have to know and plan out efficiently your schedule for the semester so that you can be as efficient in your work as possible and do well in your classes for the semester. My biggest struggle was eating. <laughs> Eating was just really hard just to keep up with all the time. There's at least two meals you need to eat in a day. The most, three for me. So then that's three times seven meals for the week. That's a lot of meals to think about. 
and I just wouldn't eat. So I will say, even if you're not staying on campus, get a meal plan on campus. At UCF, we have night cash. So I don't have to get a meal plan per se, but I can have night cash for when I don't want to spend money or if I don't know what I really want to eat. I can go on campus, go to the student union, spend my night cash, and be done with that. Have a meal plan, at least for lunches and dinners or breakfast or for all three of them, however you want to do it. Just have a meal plan for a little while so that that's not something that you have to think about. Because if you don't cook, if you can't cook, then it's eating out, which is much easier than being able to cook because I do have a kitchen here. So being able to cook, not wanting to spend money because we already broke college students, too much for me. Another tip, apply for food stamps. You can get food stamps if you're a full-time or part-time student. Also, you're even more qualified if you're a full-time or part-time student with a full-time or part-time job on campus or off campus. Apply for food stamps as soon as possible. Now with food stamps, you can't buy hot foods, even at the grocery stores. You have to only buy cold foods. But we have a Publix. Publix makes subs. I eat subs religiously all the time, y'all, because food stands pay for it. They have cold chicken. They have cold meals. And then, of course, your groceries that you can buy with that food stamp. So if you get food stamps, even if it's $100 a month, you'll be straight. That's $100. That's not outside of your pocket. EBT also works at gas station for candy, drinks, Wawa smoothies, all that good stuff, too. So, And my last tip is going to be that you cannot window shop for friends. From K through 12... You can just be like, oh, girl, I like your hair. Oh, girl, I like your shirt. Where'd you get your shoes from? And if it, even if it didn't go into a full depth conversation, the next day at school, you guys were probably going to talk to each other or y'all probably would smile at each other. That's not how that works. When you get up here and you go to a college and you tell somebody that you like their hair or you like their clothes or you like their shoes, they're going to say thank you and keep it pushing. They is not going to try to have no conversation with you unless they have time. Even if they have time, they probably don't. So they're going to keep it pushing. Another tip, and I should have said this earlier, make a schedule for yourself. Make a schedule for your life to keep your life on track. Have a laundry day. Have a Make sure you tidy up your room and apartment day. Have a homework day going along with your school schedule. Just have your days planned out as best as you can so that you can get everything done in your day. And last but not least, just enjoy yourself when you come up here. It's a whole new world. It's a whole new beginning. Leave your high school self in high school. Come up to college with the new mindset, with the open heart, with the open brain, and just see what it is that's out there for yourself. Learn yourself. Have fun with yourself. You know what I mean? Just do you when you come up here. Don't worry about what everybody else got going on. Don't worry about what this person has on and what this person is doing and then what the people from home are doing. Do not worry about them either. Worry about you. Especially if you're young and getting on campus, you see just a lot of people that already have their lives together because they're older than you. They should. It can be really hard to see everybody having their lives together and doing and being in the spaces that they want to do and be in and you're just getting started. It can be really discouraging, but don't let it discourage you. Use that as motivation to get where you want to go. And with that being said, I had a fun time recording this video for you. I cannot wait to update you on my first full year of college in the next six months and I'm probably going to be a whole different person. But I'm so excited to be on this journey with myself and to be where I am today. I've worked so hard to be here. And I just want to thank y'all for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And comment what you want to see more of. So thank you for watching. See y'all next week.